Nick Avery's his customs today. We're going to do the next part on our three-wheel buggy build, which is starting to make some of our final parts. So we've got to take this sheet of alloy here, and we're going to make it, make it into our chassis and all the other bits we need. Uh, the sheet here is just 5052 uh, marine grade. It's nothing stupidly high tensile. Um, it's just what we could pick up without having to buy a full sheet. So let's get this on the machine. parts cut they come up nice and clean these are all the bits here um, we only had really one issue with this and that was um, this part here where it was cut it was on one of the uh, t-slots so obviously we couldn't we should have probably done the countersink before we cut it out but we were trying to eliminate having to do three tool changes rather than just the two so we just had to do this by hand there's a little bit of a ridge on here which we could probably clean up and sort of buff this up uh, this is just cut with a little bit of cutting fluid which we used WD-40 as you would have probably seen sort of coming in now and again spraying it on the bit was a two and a half mil bit this is the bit here if you guys are interested chassis come up quite nice countersinks come up nice as well this is just the cheap Chinese countersinking bit that we got off AliExpress it was only a few dollars um, and then just some of the other bits here we sort of countersunk everything that was going to show just to give it a nice clean look it's the motor plate there some of the battery strap mounts which are going to mount on the side and they're going to pivot around this point here to make it easy to open and close and get it in and out this is the swing arm shock mount and then that's this one here is going to be the other front shock mount which it all gets sandwiched together as you'll probably would have seen on the first video all get sandwiched together like so um, all these holes line up and then there'll be some little standoffs that will tie everything together so it makes it nice and strong part so let's get the old one apart and start putting this together so we've got the old car pulled apart um, got everything printed up in the final material so this has been printed up in a polymaker nylon which is the high strength stuff um, it's quite nice and lightweight considering so, so everything's been printed up in it um, obviously overhangs is not the best with these nylon when this is printing it about I think we printed this at 295 degrees so it's come out pretty nice other than that little overhang that's our little um, adapter plate that bolts to the base plate that gives us still the same kick up as what the stock buggy would have had pre-assembled a little bit um, as you can see we've already pre press fitted the bearings so we're going to start from the front and then work our way to the back So we've got most of the front end all together here. Um, you can see that we ran body posts through here into here. Everything should tie everything quite well together hopefully. Um, these are the battery mounts here. Just a quick example of how easy they are to work. One screw comes out, folds out, back in. So our theory behind this was to help tie everything together without having having to run it above here just sort of keeps it a cleaner look so it eliminates any stress that might be through the center of the car because obviously our gearbox is going back here um, we don't really have much room to sort of do a full upper deck or anything because obviously we've got a battery that goes in there AC goes there and we sort of need a little bit of room for wiring and stuff so now we're going to get our back end together and then bolt this to the back of the car all right so this is the sort of the gearbox mount slash swing arm mount so our alloy bits are going to Slot into here. This will be the main center part for the shock. Gearbox um, or the modem plate will go there. Here's some standoffs that will tie it together there. And then we'll have the outer plate here. We'll have another couple of standoffs just to tie everything together to make sure this is a nice solid 
unit since all the pressure is going to be put back onto this unit. And then this thing I was simply go into there, rod the shaft through, and then this is the um, mount for the rear shock. I'm simply shot in there, bolts through, and it's held in place that way. And then this little part here is designed for our little um, belt tensioner, which is a little nylon nut drops into there. Run through there with a couple of bearings and just to help keep a little bit of tension on the um, belt itself. So let's go these bits together. Okay, so we've got as much as we can together at the back. Um, there's still a few standoffs we're running, waiting for in, in the right colour. Um, we're going to dig through and see. We may have some, but I thought we had some here for this, but obviously we don't. Um, I think we might have just misplaced the package. So it's a pretty simple setup. The motor's going to fit into there. That's where your back end pivots from. Got a pinion, back to a spur, back to a belt, which goes to the back wheel. Uh, we tried to get this sort of somewhat as centered as possible to try to not mess the weight up so we've done our best without it sort of looking too out of place so we'll get this bolted up in the car and have a look see what it looks like we did pre-tap these holes but for some reason we're having issues getting this one and we're just going to run the tap back through it a bit Won't be able to put all these screws in. Um, we thought we had some shorter ones here, but we've only got a handful. Um, so there's a few screws we'll just leave out until we get some more. That's just to sort of get it more together in a permanent state so we can make sure there's nothing else we need to adjust. get the back wheel just temporarily mocked up. Um, we've obviously got to get the final length axle still. Took a bit of a guess ordering these. These are just some D-shaft axles that we got in 5mm. It makes it a lot easier for doing this sort of stuff to quickly bolt together but we'll probably end up just having to make some of our own. Um, put them in the lathe and grind up grind some flats into them. So wobbly. I think it's the adapter itself is probably not quite faced properly so we'll probably put that in the lathe as well and just make sure it's faced so it spins free. Um, we we'll sort of just loosely mock everything up for now. It might look a little bit ugly for now but we once we know what length we need we can measure some. Along with some of the shorter ones we need as well. Just run a standoff that we've got sitting here just to hold everything in place for the time being. Okay, so we've got our shocks finally mounted, as they should be. We've got our axles cut to length, and we've also ground the flats in for the grub screws, front and rear. Um, so now we're going to start looking at the electric. So up front, we've got an Onosaki low-profile servo. For our speed controller, we've gone with a Hextronic G2 from Year Racing. Great affordable speed controller. And then our receiver, we're just running Tenergy GT5, which is the same as a Flysky. It's just a Hobby King variant of it. So the receiver is going to mount back up in here. So we kept it out of the way. We sort of had no other space. We didn't want to start stacking um, the speed control on top of the receiver. And the speed control is going to pop in here. Wires are going to cleanly go just up and over the battery. And then we've got some nice 12 gauge wire here. Which is going to keep everything nice and clean. So it's going to go from there down to the speed controller. Short run to the battery. So let's get soldering. <laughs> 